up today after an absolute barnstormer of a race one that we had yesterday afternoon full of drama oh it was absolutely all over the shop and throughout the uh, 15 laps that we had from the very start well we've had another qualifying session since then and it is the front row of the grid mimicking the championship fight billy van erde has qualified from this morning on pole position and haruki noguchi is arch championship rival who crashed out of yesterday's race is second on the grid from your double race winner last time out in buriram is daniel sharil who is in third place my name is matt dunn alongside me is fran wild ready to give you the commentary here in uh, in mategi we're just gonna turn down the air conditioning because i feel like i'm about to ice up and if you, we stop talking and probably this is because we've frozen basically i'll put a jacket on anyways it's uh, everybody down there has got their jackets on the sun is going down the lights are coming on it's a little bit overcast but we don't think there's any risk of rain for these riders they are ready to go with racing for the second time here in japan fran let's have a talk about yesterday's race absolutely jam-packed full of drama we have some news as well on some of the guys like benjamin baker and uh Salu as well who won't be riding today yeah exactly had a couple of incidents in the second qualifying session of the weekend this morning which are a little bit of a different format this weekend we had one qualifying yesterday and then race one and then another qualifying this morning so uh, yeah those two guys will not be lining up Kop Chai Seiliu from a crash yesterday and then Benjamin Baker after a crash this morning so best wishes to those guys hope we can see them back soon at Sepang for the season finale but uh, yeah so that's why if you did tune in yesterday and you're expecting to see the same grid it's not the same grid at all it's really been shaken up since that first qualifying session when they've had a bit more track time in better conditions today yeah a bit more track time and Billy Van Erde your pole position man has definitely found something overnight yesterday he was really struggling to keep up with the leaders and he was really gifted uh, his final position really as uh, from the crashes that happened ahead of him Billy Van Erde ended up finishing seventh place really his pace was not enough to the match to even get within barely even in the top 10 yesterday but he really profited from some accidents yesterday he clearly found something in qualifying managed to qualify first on the grid but Haruki Noguchi his arts championship rival clearly thought <laughs> I've seen what you could do from the back of the grid mate I can't let you get away from the front yeah definitely and unfortunately for Noguchi yesterday he overcooked it a little bit and ended up going down the road so quite a big dent to his uh, title aspirations despite the not poor form but certainly more challenging race that uh, championship leader Billy Van Erde had like we said so Noguchi not able to capitalize and it was in fact the Australian who gained a big chunk of points despite how the race was looking in those initial stages and uh, yeah it's now 16 points so that's a third place on the podium so quite a sizable gap although as we saw yesterday and as we've seen almost every round drama can hit very often and very hard in the age of talent but in any lap at any corner even in the straights it doesn't matter where action will always happen in the age of talent cup that is why we love it and i hope all of you watching on facebook or youtube wherever uh, or even on twitter at the moment uh, enjoy these races just as much as we do the championship fight really coming into its closing stages now we have this race and then we have the final round in malaysia in just a couple of weeks time 16 points separate billy van erde and Haruki Gucci, but Daniel Sharrell, the Malaysian, has really put himself up into the championship fight. 127 points he has to his names now, largely helped by that double victory last time out. Your rider, the Indonesian rider, Mario Aji, who was previously in third spot heading into the Buriram round last time out, he has now been bumped down to fifth place after another crash, crashing out of contention yesterday, looking to go up the inside of Daniel Sharrell, if my memory serves me right, just lost the front end and crashed out. He is okay and will be racing although that was a bit of a disaster qualifying for him as well he'll start for the fourth row of the grid in 10th show nishimura though your rider who was second yesterday he is now fourth in the championship now, a quick mention for takuma matsuyama yesterday's winner on home turf he will be starting from fourth on the grid today uh, an absolute awesome performance yesterday he did not want anybody else to lead at any real point of uh, the race and he absolutely destroyed that final sector coming out of the tight turn 11 into the sort of flowy turn 12 13 the heartbreaking change of direction into 14 he really had that nail did not give anybody a chance at all whatsoever to take him up the inside there riders coming round now there is the number 11 of matt
Matsuyama ready to go. His tell you what, his numbers look a lot neater today. They looked a bit wonky yesterday, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think he'll uh, he'll take a lot of confidence from that race yesterday. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, like you said, it was a really really solid performance there to uh, wrap that up. No real big dramas. Super mature performance. Great defensive riding, and uh, got it wrapped up. So it could be an interesting one here today. Obviously, not quite had that same pace in qualifying, but also qualifying is fairly early this morning. It always gives us a bit of a fright, doesn't it? That it's actually Moto Three. Oh, it does. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, very different conditions now. So let's see what we've got in race two. Yeah, the lights are about to come on. The reds are up. We're about to go racing for the second time here in Mategi. Lights out and away we go. Hey, that looked like a good start from the few rows back from Mario Aji, but it is the rider on the outside of the grid, Daniel Sharrell, who looks as though he has got the whole shot yet again. Four races in a row, absolutely awesome stuff from the Malaysian. Does help that he's definitely one of the more lightweight riders. They're all, but oh, that looked like that was Matsuyama had a massive moment coming out of turn two. He has lost so much ground on the run down to turn three now. Yeah, that was big drama there. Big wobble, but uh, nicely collected there for Matsuyama. It could have been absolutely disaster for him on the first lap after that great race yesterday. But yeah, has shuffled him back quite a bit. And like you said, absolute hole shot king now is Sharil. That's yeah. four in a row. Amazing performance from the Malaysian. Definitely the uh, Lorenzo of this grid, I think, in terms of race starts. Getting a bit of a reputation now as Daniel Sharil, a real championship threat. It was a possibility when we came into this weekend that Billy Van Erde could wrap up the title here. That's now mathematically in impossible uh, at the moment he will have to do that at the final round going down to the wire as ever how exciting look at that lucky 13 Henry Ancia moving up to the third spot at the moment he managed to finish fifth in yesterday's race in that leading group of five along with Boasi as well uh, them two just missed out on the podium spot sadly Boasi is just in the back of this group the number five at the moment there stalking Haruki Noguchi Oh, that was a big crash out the back there. Was that, who was that? That's number 10. That's Toshiki Sender. Oh, that, he, he managed to uh, nearly get caught up with the Gucci yesterday as well. It looked like he crashed out, but he hadn't. But he definitely has crashed out now. Nearly set himself into orbit. Thank goodness to see him up and walking away after that. What a shame for the rider racing at home here. Yeah, that's a bit of drama for Sender. Like I said, yesterday he was caught up in that incident. Oh, we have a change for the lead. I think Lucky yeah. has made that stick, so he moves through uh, to the front of this race. But uh, yeah, yesterday Sender, obviously victim of that bad luck and just in the wrong place at the wrong time as Noguchi crashed, sent him a bit wide. He did recover to score a single point, so that was an impressive ride from the Japanese uh, rider. Two rides in one sentence, we'll go with it. But uh, yeah, really bad luck today to see him crash out like that. But yeah, up and okay, main thing. Hey, look at that. Lucky Hendry Ansia, the, uh, the Indonesian rider there getting marked again by Daniel Sharrell. He's really, really quick now on that home straight and into turn one. Great breaking manoeuvre there. Managed to hold his line very well. And who's that on the inside of Lucky 13? Oh, it's Billy Van Erde. He normally had a really tight line there, but just missed out a little bit of drive. Noguchi's just behind. It looks as though he's about to make a move, but Billy's got other ideas. He wants to go on the inside of Lucky. Lucky moves for the lead, though. Lots of close racing already in the early stages here. Normally, this is the kind of craziness you see towards the end of the race. Right, this and, is uh, we well, see it throughout true, the race. True. <laughs> but uh, after a relatively drama free first couple of corners, that wobble from Matsuyama really set off, uh, really lit the fuse, didn't it? Bit of a really? change, yeah, yeah, yeah a change so, uh, in action. He got lucky entry answer there. He's moved up five spots since uh, his starting place on the grid, where he's in sixth. Uh, well, now he's in second, so only four spots. But what a start that was from him. Rossi, though, back down in uh, sixth place, he's moved up all the way from ninth place on the grid as well pretty solid starts for these guys we're only on lap two at the moment yeah there's some really good performances from those two especially of late started the season a little bit slower but uh, both Kwasi and Hedrian a Thai rider and Indonesian rider respectively and they really picked up their pace in the last few rounds and there's been some solid results for them so it's great to see them more in this battle at the front which obviously started a little bit more like initially a one horse Ooh, race who's then that two in the background three, down and there another one down oh another one bites the dust unfortunately Noguchi though moves up on the inside of Van Oh, he looked a little bit twitchy on the exit there. We'll find out who that was down there. Uh, uh, who's actually fallen behind? No movement on our tiny screens at the moment. We should get that information coming up fairly shortly. We'll keep an eye on that. But Van Erde on the run down to turn 11. He's making a move for the lead, but is Lucky going to keep his line? He does. Oh, Noguchi runs very, very wide. Very easy to do that. He's lost a lot of ground and a hell of a lot of drive there. Blimey, he's really going to get swamped by everybody at that point. Oh, it was Powie who crashed out there. Oh, and Hendry Answer, your leader has been given a jump start. Oh, my goodness, what drama that is. So what punishment is he going to get for that? Is it a ride through, surely? Yeah, I would imagine. Oh, oh we've got dear. a serious drama. 
Blimey, we've got major drama on the exit of the turn. Multiple riders down, but it looks like they're up. Who's that who's crashed out, though? Riders falling down. The order. Can't see anyone too much on the time and screen at the moment. Oh, it's Mario Adji is down, and also number three, that's Shoni Shimura, who is also down. And number 11, I think, is that Matsuyama, who's gone as well. Or could it actually be uh, Sainza Wang, number 17? Here's, we're going to get a replay of what happened. Oh, it's Munandar who went down first. Oh, and it's just a chain reaction. He took out Nishimura. Oh, that was Saint Wang who went down. Mario Aji had absolutely nowhere to go. That was an enormous crash out of the final turn. Oh, my goodness me. Poor Nishimura. He tried to do a corn file. So did Aji. Just did not work. That was a big hit for them. Poor fellas, but we're continuing to race here. Matsuyama finds himself up into the leading group now. Yeah, look, look, luckily, like, no one got too collected by bikes there, just uh, hitting other machinery. But a really difficult crash for those guys. Hope we can get an update soon and see that they're OK. But, uh, yeah, so much drama in such a short amount of time. Obviously, Ken Jensen now is the guy that caused that incident, unfortunately. Obviously, you know, when you've got close racing in a group like this, that is a bigger risk that it's much easier to, yeah, if you're crashed, if you crash, it causes that sort of knock-on effect. Yeah, especially so, uh, these opening laps. Exactly, when everyone's still very, very close together. But we have Bill Van Ehren now in the lead of this race, and looking at Drexler, hopefully won't get involved in too much drama if he has got to serve a penalty at some point, because obviously that can play a big role in everyone else's race in a group that he really shouldn't be in if he is to serve a penalty. Yeah, not so lucky today is Hendry Ansa, unfortunately for him. There's the yellow flags waving it. There'll be no overtaking in this final sector as they come through. Oh, that laps pass quickly, isn't it? Yeah, come through to the final turn. No overtaking, please, boys. You might face another penalty, but they run out. They will see some of the bikes at the side of the circuit uh, and be checking out what's happened there. Hendry Ansa, he's just looked to his right for his pit board. He will have seen that then. He will have seen ride through 13. I wonder what he's thinking now then. When is he going to take that? He should have three laps to actually take that ride through he is going to be absolutely livid fan i'll tell you what that must have been very marginal i didn't spot that yeah it really must have been marginal like you say it wasn't really visible to us maybe you've watched it and saw it immediately and think we're a little bit slow on the pace there but uh, to us anyway it didn't seem anything too extreme wasn't an obvious movement no sort of lorenzo at cota situation but uh, <laughs> yeah definitely really disappointing for him hopefully he has seen that pit board and like you say three laps to serve that yeah ride through penalty for him there's confirmation on your screens there and what was that in the background coming off on the bike a little bit of tape or something, I'm not I'm sure. Not sure, or it could but, have uh, been light reflecting strangely on a tear off from a visor, maybe, well but it uh, did look at yeah, something on track down there. Well, but a uh, great job the marshals have done getting that uh, mess out of the way. Yeah, for, they, uh, well, the, the lap is about two minutes and four seconds, so yeah, that's exactly. a pretty good clean up job. But they're very, very efficient indeed, aren't or they? Or if you're Hoodie Group Kinaguchi, it's a uh, 2039, fastest yeah. lap of the race, just dipped below that barrier. So uh, he has recovered well from that going wide a few, uh, well, not a few laps ago, a few moments oh, ago, really. Well, he's so. making a move there. Oh, for we've that. got drama oh, for Van Absolute Well, oh, terrible. Well, I completely outbraked himself did Andrew Ansia. Completely to the back of this group. Down in seventh now. That has done his, uh, well, he, he wouldn't have uh, managed to gain much from being in the lead in this group and then taking the ride through. But that has completely stuffed it for him, unfortunately. But Noguchi up into the lead. Shower second. And it's Billy Van Erde, your championship leader in third. But look at that in fourth place. The number 11, Matsuyama. More pride at stake for him. He really wants another win, a double win at home, and he, he takes uh, Van Erde up the inside down into turn 11 now. Yeah, and you can see Cheryl oh, there attacking the Oh, Gucci lead. runs very wide, a bit grass track of him. Hey, that is the second time in this section he's run really wide there and lost a lot of ground. Yeah, definitely. Cheryl there made it look really easy. He, uh, almost round the outside, although it was the Gucci that had moved over to defend. That didn't work very well at all. And like you said, yeah, really scrappy couple of laps here, and he'd done all that hard work to get right back in the fight at the front, and now he's got another deficit to deal with but uh, yeah so fastest lap and then another mistake have to see if we can get a little bit calm down maybe you know take a few deep breaths and manage to get back to that group ahead take a few deep breaths it's good advice for the both of us as well fan of this <laughs> Definitely. Of the game. as we see Charles and uh, Van Erde decide they don't want to be in each other's slipstreams at all Matsuyama just stalking Sharil I'll uh, tell you what speaking of Noguchi a messy couple of laps uh, last time out in Buriram he just looked so calm and collected completely in uh, in the first race in that group of 11 he looks so he's completely in control but not the case hey look at this the championship standings at the moment 
think that may already have changed with a uh, change the lead every corner, there. Really, isn't yeah, it? pretty much. But uh, but yeah, obviously you can see then there's a lot on the line for Noguchi. Uh, started off as a clear points leader in the first couple of rounds, and then now really under pressure to manage to keep that second and gain on points leader Van Erde. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But definitely, like you said, Bury Round looked absolutely solid. Didn't quite play out for him perfectly, but uh, looked completely cool, collected, under control all the time. Uh, really measured races from the Japanese rider there, and super aggressive move that he kind of had to make on the Van Erde at the final corner in race two. But here, yeah, just looking a little bit messy. Looks so, a little bit um, messy, but it he just held a It would be an interesting one, I think, to see. He did, that was a nice move, that exactly. That was a lovely tight line through there. Bit of a race of two halves so far for Noguchi. Obviously, home pressure, maybe that's playing a part. Maybe it's the championship pressure as well. Now he's not got quite so much breathing space. But uh, now he is definitely homing in on his prey ahead of him. Yeah, and the uh, the prey is at the moment, Daniel Sharil and Matsuyama. Takuma Matsuyama down into turn 11 again is the number 11, masters it perfectly. This section here is where he really pulled out enough of a gap to make sure nobody could take him up the inside into that final corner. The Gucci just has a look up the inside of Van Erde, but he thinks better of it at the moment. And look at that, he really kept that solid one, two bike legs, did Matsuyama, out of the lead there. But look at this, the slipstream. Or oh, you do wonder if anybody's going to be able to get one another before the line if they're close enough yeah definitely it's not the uh, incredible drag to the line that you get somewhere like Magello for example obviously these guys don't race there but uh, there is enough space to make that slipstream count out of that final corner and that time around Matsuyama's exit wasn't as solid as the one he got yesterday to take that win so we'll definitely be aware of the fact oh. that he'd lost the lead by the time they got there this time around oh it's getting I pretty close we out there again four abreast at that <laughs> stage the game, same. but, no. <laughs> but uh, no relatively calm again now all back in line and uh, ready for another bit of drama at the next corner so it's Sharil at the moment in the lead. That's about to change, I think, in three, two, one. But uh, maybe yeah, Van Ed a quick thing better of it, yeah. And uh, Noguchi's the one really going for that aggressive <laughs> move. <laughs> Lee just pulls another aggressive move. He sort of gets arm right, get arm right, and tip in and barge him out of the way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he showed that aggression, like we said, in the final corner in race two at Bury Ram. So uh, no holds barred for Noguchi. Ooh, but, uh, great definitely, move from Sharil there yeah, on Van Yeah, lovely Erde. move from the Malaysian rider. Again, he has gone the other way, really, and this weekend just carried on looking really, really collected, able to take that pressure, super calm, great moves, nothing too reckless from the Malaysian either. Just, uh, yeah, really great racecraft in the last few races from Sharil. And yesterday, obviously, now he is in that title fight, a lot more than just mathematically. So, uh, yeah, that third place was important, and he didn't throw it down the road, just took those points and put in another solid performance. Oh, I bet it's uh, absolutely irresistible, the thought of being able to be in the championship fight all the way down to the wire and maybe even clinch the title right from underneath Van Erde's nose on home turf in Sepang in a couple of weeks' time. Can you imagine? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it should be an interesting season finale, I think, this time around. So uh, last season with uh, Chan on choose form at Sepang, it was almost a foregone conclusion when they got there to the Malaysian venue because uh, the young Turkish rider was absolutely unstoppable there. It was a real sort of, you know, Lorenzo at Mugello, Marcus at Cota, Senna at Monaco even level of domination. So it's a bit more of an open book for these guys this season. And we've got the board out again for Hendry Ansher well, there. Obviously he's not, not seen it, it, not he, taken it yet. I think Franny might have one more lap to take it, otherwise he's going to get black flagged and sent in. So you do wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's going through his head, because I'm sure he had his head towards the right. He must have seen it, but maybe not. I wonder if there's any other points around the circuit where they have these boards out showing him that he has to do a ride through. I'm not quite so sure. Usually just down the start and finish straight. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like like you said, like physically, it looks like he has seen it from the angle he looked over then. So hopefully this time around he will take that. But uh, yeah, it is, you know, it must be so tempting and so frustrating when you've had that situation and you've got to take that penalty. It must be really tempting. Oh, sorry, we had just a bit of a moment the there, there. there between Van Erde and Sharil. Van Erde just looking at him there to see if he's still up, I think. My goodness me, well... Uh, we, we'll see how this uh, really spices up. It's around about now and over the next three laps and they started dropping almost like flies in this leading group. Mind you, the leading group is much bigger at this stage in the game. These guys, yeah, these well. six or so are all together at the moment, if I'm uh, looking at it rightly. No, sorry. These seven are all closely together and behind. They're four seconds behind. Is the next rider, Putra, who fell down yesterday. Yeah, so um, just going back to what I was saying, obviously no dashboard communication in this championship. Hopefully he has seen that board, but uh, the stakes are too high and he will get black flagged if he doesn't take that ride through penalty so uh, better make sure he's seen it and head in this time around otherwise he's uh, going to have another notification to see and this time even worse well, Fran, 
happens if you didn't see that either. You never know. But the, the only thing I was going to add about that is when you're in a battle like this, uh, you're not going to be paying attention to your pit board, let alone anything else, aside from maybe flags that you can just catch out of the corner of your eye. I'm not quite so sure because I've never had this sort of experience before. <laughs> that is what I hear from other people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, when you are in the heat of battle, it is a little bit uh, difficult to manage to, you know, notice everything every lap but that's why they have a few laps to see that and take it so uh, yeah it looks like he's carried on again he's coming so. across the finish line and he's not taking the pit lane so you wonder what's going to happen now might be a change of signal for him he absolutely dives into turn one then he goes a little bit wide but largely keeps his drive that was absolutely awesome watching him going into there you wonder what's going to happen now well there's no distractions whilst he's out the front but you wonder how long he is going to be out front for this is quite a long uh, drag up to turn three uh, and there we have it confirmation then He's getting the black flag. He has to pull off to the side of the circuit, come into pit lane or so. Uh, he is absolutely out of this race, completely disqualified his lucky Hendry answer. Drama indeed. Yeah, that's really bad luck. I'm going to assume, given the benefit of the doubt, assume he's not seen that. So uh, now, obviously, that big waving black flag is a little bit easier to spot, maybe. We see that. It's getting quite dark, Fran. Well, true. Uh, well, there it, he is, down to the see. forefront of your screen. Sorry, at the, the back there. Yeah, he did get a... Uh, he was on the outside of the second row, sorry, didn't give a words out in time, but yes, unfortunately for him, that was a definite jump start. Yeah, it was. It wasn't too violent and didn't really sort of do that classic when they just edge forward and then suddenly stop again because they've realised they've moved. So a little bit harder to spot, but it definitely just a smidge early from the Indonesian rider. Was that Noguchi diving up the inside again? Yes, it was. It was. Up the inside of Matsuyama. He really does manage to do those dive bomb moves and really maintain the grips very, very well. Doesn't look at any risk of sort of tucking the front in front of them or anything like that. I've just said that and I'm very much aware of the commentator's <laughs> curse. Absolutely. Uh, luckily, he's still up. Yeah, it looks like he's flipped the coin again, is not he? Back to calm, controlled Noguchi that we've seen so often this season. So, yeah, it'll be interesting over the last few laps of this race as well. Now, he really does have to push, not just to, you know, beat Van Erda slightly or just, you know, knock a few points off his lead, but really to make up some ground now. So that would be an interesting one, I think, from Noguchi. But uh, also, it will be interesting to see if Hendrancha is going to see that black flag and get out of this leading group, because you don't want a protagonist in such a close battle who actually doesn't have anything on the line and is going to get in the way of your race. Yeah, Frank, you do wonder what's happening. He was looking to the... Uh, to the right there and also just as they exit that turn there is a black flag there for him uh, you wonder uh, is Hendry Anza pulling off now then yes he is he has seen the flag he's pulling off he, he thinks oh bless him he thinks he's got a problem with the bike he doesn't know he clearly didn't see it then that is very unfortunate for him uh, he's pulling off to see what is the problem with the bike but uh, no, he is. The, there's black flags all over the place. There's no chance you're not seeing that now. As Matsuyama moves up into the lead yet again, so he has moved to the front. Can he get another uh, victory? Me and Fran just thinking we're getting a little bit colder in this commentary box. Someone has to turn the air on. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, gone from nice sunny day today to a uh, very frio indeed in here. But. Uh, yeah, so obviously Hendrensa has seen that black flag a lot harder to miss flying all the way around the track, it would seem. But uh, yeah, obviously he thinks he's got a problem with the bike, but you would expect that to be a black and orange flag if that were the case. I Maybe mean, he's uh, doing so, a little bit more know, research for, on, the, on his flag. A little bit more on the old yellow book, but uh, no, nah, that's bad luck for him, obviously. I hadn't been aware at all of that jump start, and it was pretty marginal, like we saw from that replay, so it won't have been immediately obvious even to him, maybe, that he had jumped it. Obviously, everything's absolutely taut, you know, you're really paying attention to those lights by thousandths of a second, so, you know, easy mistake to make, I'm going to say, although, like we were saying earlier, no direct experience of that situation, no. but I can imagine I would uh, definitely be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> exactly, definitely jumped the gun uh, a little bit quick off the mark, that's for sure. Uh, now, um, we're looking at this front group now, down to six riders, of course, with the departure of Hendriantia. And we're in the background, we're not talked about them much. You have the local rider, Koji Harama, and you also have Boasi, the Thai rider, as well in the background. Now, Boasi made his way up towards the front of the group uh, later on in the stage we're only halfway through the race now. Marcy was really good at just sort of holding station, keeping an eye on what was going on, and then trying to make his move. It didn't really work out for him all that much yesterday. He ended up fourth position, couldn't quite get on the podium. And actually, come to think of it, it looks like he's just losing a little bit of ground at the moment. But with these long straights, he can still stay in the slipstream. Yeah, definitely have to keep an eye on him at the moment. Like you said, it's six tenths that time around, which is pretty similar to the previous lap. But uh, yeah, it just seemed to concertina a bit, that gap back to the tie rider. Keep an eye on for definite, but yeah, Hirama now in this group, and definitely, you know, 
well involved in the fight. It would seem at the moment like the front four are really, you know, more eager to fight each other and scrap for position at the moment. Karama doesn't seem to be interested in the drama. That was a rhyme and I didn't even mean to do it on purpose. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Here's a little round of applause for I you. I mean, I, I really don't think it was worth much except maybe getting fired. <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely, you know, sort of sat there pretty calm, just watching on as these guys do battle. Not losing any time, of course. He can keep steady pace there, keeping his rhythm and just watch them scrap it out. But uh, in a little bit of daylight there, back to Van Erde, so I'll have to close that back up again. But it changes so quickly as the gaps Constantino in this class corner to corner. I'm going to tell you what he said about Hirama wanting more drama. And Matsuyama wants it as well. He was making moves all the way up the inside of uh, looking like Shariel and uh, Noguchi there. But just threatening, ever threatening for him. And what? I say threatening. He's moving up right there. Oh, he nearly tagged the back of him. Oh, that was nearly all a drama overload for him. Oh, my goodness. Bill Van Erde had an absolute perfect view of that. Probably thinks maybe I need to back off or actually just make a move on him. Yeah, I think moment. there'll be a little note now in uh, Van Erde's book, uh, just uh, be aware of Matsuyama, because obviously yeah. that was he did pull out of it, just in time to stop that being a complete disaster but definitely a little bit overly hopeful that move. Well, as it stands at the moment which it won't stand like that for long, even for the remainder of this corner, Noguchi was moving up to only minus four points on Van Erde, but will be bumped down a further four uh, to eight points as Daniel Sharrell has now moved up into the lead once again. Matsuyama is just behind him, he wants to make a move in this final corner, you do wonder when you're invo involved in this sort of battle, you're all so close, if there's any, if, if they've managed to learn yet at this such early stage in the game about look, watching their race craft and can I watch them involved in this battle and learn to make a move in that final lap final corner you don't know but this is the Gucci who's gone up the inside although that looks like Matsuyama who has managed to go into the lead yet again absolute class oh he's gone down in the background who is that it's Daniel Sharrell who's gone down and out oh what a shame for him he was doing so well looking so he could get himself right into the championship fight that has done him no good whatsoever yeah I was just about to start saying as well so maybe I've just cursed him even mentally without having said it yet that uh, Noguchi will have to watch where Sharil is as well in terms of keeping that second place uh, with this group being so close but really bad luck for the Malaysian just overcooked that a little bit it would get a replay here so I Ooh, think does he get all oh, oh, maybe just got a little bit of a tag there yeah but potentially good to meet difficult the Japanese to see from that angle. The mark, aren't they? absolutely yeah amazing here in Matege they're right out there to sort that out quickly but yeah Malaysian rider up and okay so bit of heartbreak potentially championship fight over but it is still a lot to gain at Sepang there's 50 points on the table there so it's far from completely over but definitely he's, a lot harder now for he's Cheryl. 26 points down so uh, yes if Van Erde wins then uh, he will be out of the championship fight for the next round I think my match has just served me right for the first time this season better off than round 16 isn't it <laughs> my goodness unfortunately yes that is it well Daniel Schauer at the moment uh, with uh, Van Erde back down in fourth and 34 points off, but Van Erde wins. Cheryl is out of championship contention. Yeah, absolutely. So have to keep a very, very close eye on how this pack shuffles in the final few laps. So five to go after this one. Not very far at all, but it is an over two-minute lap. So it's still quite a while for these guys to squabble it out. A good solid eight minutes of action left on your screens. How will our voices cope as we get into this sort of final stages? It looks like Brassi's still hanging in there just about. Maybe losing a couple of hundreds per lap there's really not much in it but it looks like uh, it was the, the number eight of Hirama who has got himself well involved in this hey does that look like Billy Van Erde is just losing a little bit of ground to him very possibly you can see the Australian really is quite extreme in the way he tucks in on that bike you can always see a really really uh, obvious movement from the Australian but obviously you know not a bad thing in any way he is the guy in charge of this championship as it stands but yeah it does seem to be a little bit of daylight between him and this lead trio but uh, Boasi did lose around a tenth and a half compared to that six tenth well around six tenth gap that it was hovering at before and that is very close again <laughs> yeah Matsuyama runs it a little bit wide he overcooks it completely allowing Harama through and it gives Noguchi even uh, a couple of uh, bike lengths breathing space but Van Erde's right back in it he makes a move up the inside of Matsuyama down in into turn five uh, and that well now onto the drag onto the more curvy section turn six seven
seven and eight. Here's a replay again of what happened to Daniel Shaw. Did he get tagged by Van Erdy? He did. Got a little tag there. How unfortunate. Well, he did run it a little bit wide. These sorts of things happen. I don't think there was any malicious intent on that one. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Pure racing incident there. Just a little bit too close. Obviously, both trying to take fairly similar lines next to each other there and just a little bit further over than the Australian will have intended. Having said that, is that what happened? Was it them two down at turn 11 as well? A lot earlier on in the race, it was Van Erdy and somebody. It could have yeah, been they had a little bit of contact there as well, but uh, Van and Ed has certainly not been the most aggressive in this class this season, just as much as everyone else. <laughs> Absolutely but, uh, not. Nothing to really go, wow, OK, calm down. Yeah, nothing <laughs> so, at all. So, uh, yeah, I would say that will probably get chalked down to a racing incident. And, yeah, really bad luck for Cheryl. Unfortunately, that can happen. And Van Ed definitely was the one on the receiving end last time out. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Well, uh, well, we'll see what happens at this race. What goes around comes around. You can see he's a bit of a small frame. Is Billy Van Erde, very, very young man indeed, uh, is the number 19, only 15 years old. So that's why he's able to tuck in so well. Some of these, well, some of these guys, the oldest must be uh, 60, uh, 16. I see. I think I saw. Uh, 16 years old, yes. Yeah, there's, a, 17 there's a few years old a bit even. older. There's a few quite a lot taller as well. It's quite a motley crew when they're all walking around the paddock together in their uh, black and red hoodies, which are very, very cool. And I'm quite jealous of all the guys who uh, get to wear those. Well, congratulations you've managed to finally get the Motley crew onto your commentary after how many years now? <laughs> but uh, Yeah, so it's, you know, really different heights, weights, of course, as well, ages, levels of experience, but all racing together in this Asia Talent Cup, and it is the young and small Australian making a move for the lead now. Yeah, he overtakes his championship rival Noguchi there. We've only got three laps left to go now, uh, and we look so we're coming uh, onto the run up towards turn 10. I think you see he's got some use out of those loaders have Van Erde, we start calling him An Erde instead of calling him his butt patch blessing. He's Absolutely. running it very, very deep into turn 10 there. Really supreme braking. Uh, was that turn 10? That could have been actually been turn 11. My apologies. Yeah, and you can see from the onboard there what I was talking about, the way he repositions himself on the bike, super pronounced compared to a couple of the, the other guys on the grid. But uh, now he's in the lead. Noguchi is definitely looking... Well, lurking maybe more than looking aggressive there. Yeah, maybe definitely. you you kind of going to be interesting, I think, to see how this uh, is going to pan out. Maybe Noguchi would rather wait there and then make sure he can get the move done once and take a bit less risk on the final lap. If of course these guys are able to stay in front and uh, Matsuyama and Hirama don't have much to do with it. But uh, yeah, I think Van Erde now, if he's gone to the front, there's probably a reason for that. Maybe he thinks he has got a little bit extra now to just uh, at least thin down the riders who are in podium contention. Well, he's had a good view of everybody's rear tyre up to this point, hasn't he? He knows exactly what's just happening with these guys, who's got the most grip still available to them, but uh, Noguchi has absolutely none of it. He goes up the inside of Van Erdi at turn 11. I'm sorry, I said it was turn 11 way ages ago. It was actually turn 5. Uh, I was I wondering, but I didn't want to burn you. I got <laughs> confused by the tunnels. <laughs> yeah, the tunnels here are a little bit of a confusing factor, but yeah, Noguchi now back in command. Uh, and looking again, super relaxed, calm, collected, aggressive, everything he has been when he's won races this season, but Van Erde definitely not content to let him have it. Going to get a cracking view from the onboard camera there at that moment as uh, Van Erde just a, mi a mirror signal manoeuvre moves out on him up into turn one and two. Supreme braking manoeuvre there. You can really start to see the class come into these guys riding as the season progresses. Uh, of course, Jack Miller, very close friends with Billy Van Erde there. Uh, Jack Miller knows a thing or two about going uh, quickly around this circle. Is that's Matsuyama who's decided I'm not waiting anymore Noguchi I'm coming at the inside I want the double it's two laps to go here in Mategi and you know it's just going to get even more spicy as it goes on yeah definitely <laughs> It's getting pretty hot out there now, I think. Uh, Matsuyama will be an interesting quantity. Obviously, nothing at all to say in the championship fight, at least for those top two spots. So, nothing to lose, but also, you know, you can say the opposite of that because he is on home turf with that home pressure and with a win in his pocket already. But uh, it'd be interesting to see, I think, how Noguchi and Van Erde are going to deal with that. And again, there you see Noguchi, super, super aggressive on his championship rival. Super absolutely, smooth and clean. Yeah, super smooth and clean, but absolutely decisive move there from the Japanese rider. Obviously decided he wants to go with Matsuyama. Seriously, seriously cool, calm and collective move from him. But they've got to be careful with Matsuyama at this stage. We're on the run down now. Uh, a, a, a little bit later on, this will be turn five. Uh, they have to be careful because Matsuyama is really hot and strong in 
fact, this is turn 10, my goodness me, I've got it completely wrong again, my goodness. It's been a long day, we need another coffee, give me some of your Coke Zero. Uh, but, uh, we got on the run down there, they need to be careful. This is the section where Matsuyama is really, really strong. Noguchi does need to make this move here and make it stick. Go up the inside, don't outbreak yourself, it's off camera here, it's sunshine. He keeps it very, very tight and neat on the apex there, but Matsuyama will be sussing out there what he was able to do on this lap, and if he needs to make that move at turn 11 next time around. One more corner to go, and then it's one lap to go on the final race here in the Itamitsu Asia Talent Cup. So yeah, it looks like at the moment, just coming out of there, these two have a little bit of breathing space, but I think this long straight is gonna put paid to any hopes of managing to break away. And yeah, Van Aert are able to close back in again, looking to gain a little bit more ground in the braking zone there as well, and keeps it a bit of a tighter line there from the Australian. But uh, Noguchi definitely all out for the win, I think, here, and should be making a move, I imagine, very, very soon for the lead again. Yeah, there. Uh, well, I thought there he was, and there he goes, but absolutely not at the moment. Noguchi, he decides now he wants this win, not just for pride on home soil, but to keep his championship hopes as well and alive as possible. Only two races uh, available after this to take the win, but look at this, Van Erde goes to the other side of Matsuyama as we come on the run down <laughs> towards here, and, Matt, and it looks like Van Erde, who's got the lead now, he saw exactly what happened in Buriram. He stays well clear of Noguchi at this stage. What is going to happen at this one? We're going to be on the run down to the more uh, curvy section of the track now. This will be turn six and towards turn seven. Noguchi leads and Van Erde still finds himself in third. No, nope, he's been moved down to fourth now by Harama. Could he do anything in this final sector? Yeah, that was great racing instinct there from the Australian. That's exactly how you avoid what happened in the MotoGP race in Jerez earlier this season. <laughs> Super aware of where everyone else was on track and managed to stay out of that drama but yeah it has been an expensive few corners now in that final lap for Van Erde and he'll want to make sure he can get at least on the podium and limit some damage because uh, Noguchi definitely looking like he's going to throw everything at this to get the win. He's going to throw the kitchen sink is everything at it as Steve Day and Matt Burke would say this is out coming out of turn 10 on the run down towards turn 11 the final slip streaming opportunity that we have here. Noguchi is going to go all out to make sure he can uh, prove pivotal in the championship fight here. Van Erde though moves up to uh, moves up to third place, Noguchi in the lead now though. I don't know if he's gone a little bit wide through there, maybe not got it hooked up, but Matsuyama absolutely nailed that. This is his specialist section. This is specialist so section. We'll have to see. Oh, and Beverly Van Erde comes into the final corner. He takes third place, but it looks like Noguchi is going to get the win. It's a long run to the line, though. Matsuyama is just behind him. Is it going to be a photo finish? Oh, who's going to get it? Oh, was it Matsuyama? He was. Oh, what a win for him. He does the double. He swipes it from underneath Noguchi's nose. Oh, that was superb race from the local rider there. Van Erle takes third. He can't really sniff too much of that. Drama free for him, but it's drama all over the place. Matsuyama gets it. What is that? Is he pulling some kind of pose there for the cameras? So smooth, so oh. smooth. But yeah, amazing win there. Photo finish to decide the win and to decide who was going to complete the podium. Matsuyama just taking it from Noguchi. It's a little bit hard to see maybe if you don't know Mateki that well. There is another lighter line before the start finish line and it can get a little bit confusing but there you see oh wow just ahead <laughs> three thousandths of a second that's what that looks absolutely like absolutely incredible line. and van erder as well that was four thousandths that the australian was able to fight off koji harama by oh. so absolutely amazing work there from the australian to recover from that incredible move from harama on there the last oh. lap super aggressive but very well done for the japanese rider just losing out to his slightly smaller rival there at the end and it's not that much change in the championship with those results. Just a four-point game for Noguchi, so it should be 12 down now as we head for the season finale. Well, 12 down, and that might prove pivotal, though it could have been seven points going into the final round. What could have been for Huki, Huki Noguchi? Oh, bless him. He looks a bit uh, sort of very, very pensive about what the race uh, happened then. He seems a little bit miffed with himself, as you rightly say. Oh, I say that, but why not just have a wheelie, give it, give it full gas and, you know, pop on. Uh, it's the, you're on home soil anyways, but he really, really wanted that win, didn't he? But Matsuyama just wanted it more. Yeah, definitely. I think he definitely left everything. I keep saying definitely today. Apologies, viewers. But uh, he left everything out there today, Noguchi. And no mistakes like yesterday. That was really the absolute key today to not lose any more ground and really dent his championship chances anymore. And then, obviously, next is to not lose out 
you know, a few points to Van Erde, and then the best case scenario would have been to gain. So it may not be a win, but he has gained a few points on the Australian, and now it's 12, like we can see. So we now mathematically only have three riders in the championship fight. So we've got Van Erde on 169, Noguchi 12 down, and then Sharil just about in it by a tiny margin, because there are 50 points available at Sepang with two races, assuming there's no crazy drama, and we have two races and none cancelled. Yes, well, we shall... Which could uh, be a bit of a heartbreaker. Yes, absolutely. Who who knows? This is the Asia Talent Cup. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Completely unpredictable all over the shop. Well, fortunately, all the series that we have in Grand Prix racing are at the moment. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, we lost one in Qatar for rain one year, I think. That unexpected downfall. Oh, down force. Yeah. <laughs> downpour. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, we'll get another great double-headed showdown at Sepang because it was a stunning two races here at Bitegi. And a Stunning bit of an four races, including the Bury Ram as well. Well, yeah, absolutely. They always deliver, and it's just getting closer and closer as those guys with that little bit less experience seem to be able to close that gap and really make it a big fight at the front. So, yeah, the likes of Boisi, um, who, again, top five again. So at the start of the season, that would have been an incredible result for the tie rider, and now it's almost expected and a little bit disappointing that it's not more and fighting for that podium. Yeah, so I bet he will great be, great job he? for him. And, uh, yeah, Matsuyama, probably not everyone's tip for the win this weekend, but that first victory obviously gave him the confidence to push again today, and job incredibly well done. Hey, he came, he saw, he conquered. He came here with one goal, and that was it, to do the double, and that's exactly what he got. I really, really did not expect it to take that win. I thought it was done as Noguchi led out the final corner, but that is just enough of a drag towards the line for him to get it. Oh, what excitement that was again from the Asia Talent Cup. Hope you all really enjoyed that one just as much as we did. Goodness gracious me. Absolutely. You can see Jack Miller there on the left in the lovely colours of Alma Pramac Racing, just waiting with Bill Van Erder, who he helps out quite a lot. Hiroshi Ayama talking to the young Australian in Park Ferme as well. I think he'll probably be a little bit disappointed to not again be on the top step, but podium again after a more difficult qualifying yesterday and uh, maybe not the, quite the weekend you would have expected at Mategi. You know, bigger gap and a solid podium today. That is a good weekend. Yeah, solid weekend. So Pole we position as well. That was very cool. Let's see if we can listen in. We always know there's one from the yard. Now we go to your track. Said, now we go to your track. Yeah, so Van Erde's record at Sepang is uh, pretty good from the first couple of races. Took a win there as the first ever Australian Asian Talent Cup winner. Pretty amazing that over the course of only one season, he now could be the first ever Australian champion in the Asia Talent Cup. So that's great to see. And uh, Matsuyama, pretty happy today that Sebastian Vettel esque number one coming out again. <laughs> but uh, I think yesterday maybe he was just uh, a little bit overwhelmed. Certainly. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah, he did, because he didn't look at uh, as no, Happy quite thought, muted yeah. here yesterday but now I think uh, yeah milking it a little bit more obviously he knows he can get the job done probably a few less nerves today you know that's quite a common thing I remember Michael Vandermark did the double at Donington he said that in the race one it seemed absolutely terrifying to be in that position and didn't know if he was going to get it done then race two it was like oh, I can do this now yeah so, exactly you know, it can change a lot especially when you've got two races a weekend uh, second race can definitely be a different approach for a, a lot of these guys yeah so many uh, people talk about pressure and stuff and how that uh, uh, how that can affect people. We're getting a replay here. This will be a replay of the finish. Matsuyama just pulls out at the perfect moment, mind. Um, blimey, what a finish. There you have it. Three thousandths of a second, four thousandths of a second separating Billy Van Hurde. There's the photo finish. <laughs> oh, how awesome Amazing is racing that? here, yeah. Oh. Double Ouch. photo finish. You see the side by side there. But uh, Noguchi, I think, pretty disappointed. But yeah, perfect timing. Absolutely perfect timing from Matsuyama, like yeah. you said. And I think a little bit Billy Van Erde, maybe his weight really helped him with uh, compared to Harama. Harama looks like a bit of a bigger rider than him. Uh, so that might have helped him with the drag to the line. Um, but what a, uh, a very much needed podium for him there. Uh, and you can see, yes, the well, also the size might have helped uh, Matsuyama take the win as well from Haruki Noguchi. You can see, yeah, the Noguchi's size between one of the well. sorry, Noguchi's one of the taller riders here, so yeah. Uh, that can play a part. Obviously, you gain in different areas as well. It's only when you get to sort of Scott Redden, Loris, Baz size of rider where you kind of get those disadvantages a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, Noguchi, obviously, very different build to those guys. Yeah. But, uh, 
Yeah, P2 on the podium, at least it won't show too much. Matsuyama will still be taller, I think, from the top step. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Well, you can see the sun is setting here over Mitegi. It's been, well, setting all race long, really. The lights are out, um, and, uh, well, the lights are on, and there are people home. But let's get a look at the results, then, from this final second race at the Motor Grand Prix of Japan, the Idemitsu Asia Talent Cup. Race two, Takuma Matsuyama wins from Haruki Noguchi by three thousandths of a second. Billy Van Erde in third, rounding out the podium. Koji Hirama there in fourth from Tachiko and Boasi. Adenanta Putra in sixth, so that's a great recovery from him after yesterday's uh, uh, heartbreak. Uh, Naoki Yamada, Agung Fakral and Troy Alberto there uh, rounding out the top nine. Yeah, much uh, needed points for Troy Alberto there in ninth. And then we have Senna Adjus from Australia and Sho Nishimura, who was uh, yeah, involved in an incident in that race that unfortunately has left him in 11th. But with so much drama, as you can see, that long list of people who've not managed to finish, uh, at least able to get some points despite that. He was the first rider to collect uh, Munindar's bike, I think it was. So I'm quite surprised, given the impacts, that he's actually managed to get going again. That's yeah. quite an honorable finish. Yeah, definitely. We were not seeing how those riders are, but obviously uh, we hope, since we saw the replay, it didn't look too disastrous, and we'll, we'll hope to bring you we some see, updates. We um, see Powie and uh, Adji have been taken to the medical center, but they did uh, seem to both get up at that point. But uh, we can see Billy Van Erde is your championship leader. Still 12 points back, though, Haruki Noguchi. Daniel Sharil further 42 points back after that coming together with Van Erde. Uh, he is still in the fight. Shoni Shimura is out of the fight. Marit Aji there in uh, fourth position in the champion, uh, fifth position, sorry. Boasi sixth. Seventh, Matsuyama now after those two wins. Hendriancia, no point score for him. He was disqualified. He was in ninth. Tenth is Munandar. Seiliu and then Putra. Senda, Hirama, Paui, Yamada. And then Thong Nopakorn, Agius, uh, and Troy Alberto, Kiyuchi Sainzawang, and Benjamin Baker with eight points. We wish the riders well, who uh, unfortunately crashed out of this one uh, or during the weekend, Benjamin Baker particularly, and also Seiliu as well. Um, Kopchai Seiliu crashed out in yesterday's race. Now time for the podium ceremony. The second and final one of the Edge of Talent Cup this weekend. Three more podiums to decide tomorrow in MotoGP as well. Make sure you tune in for the day's action of the Motor Grand Prix of Japan. The riders heading out to the podium now. There is your winner, Takuma Matsuyama. Coming around, a little bit more of a celebration there. The crowd go wow. There are still people in the grandstands. I can see them opposite from our commentary position. He's up on the top step, handshake with Noguchi. Ah, oh, it's nice to have a smile from him there to say, uh, hey, good job. This is the thing, these guys do travel around together, so there is a bit of camaraderie between them all there, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And obviously, you know, Matsuyama not in that championship fight. Noguchi can afford to be a little bit friendly with him as well. But yeah, it's always great sportsmanship in the Asia Talent Cup. Like you say, they have to spend a lot of time together you know, sort of that testing, even from the first sort of selection events, they're all in that one place together, and uh, yeah, it's great to see. They have uh, dinner as well in our hospitality, the, well, the catering service that we have here. There is Huriki Noguchi holding that trophy high of the twin ring with Tegi. And, uh, sorry, not Noguchi, Matsuyama even. That's, uh, it's been a long day. Here is the winner's national anthem. Well, there we have it. Getting your money's worth out of the national anthem, as always, here in the Asia Talent Cup. Uh, Takuma Matsuyama, your winner, your double winner here in the Asia Talent Cup from Mategi. Oh, just two days of absolute drama. There it's on your screens. Malaysia is the next and final round, 3rd of November, not the 5th, uh, the 3rd of November, 4.30 local time. We have 50 points more on the board, a championship to decide. Technically, three riders still in the game, two of them on that podium 
either side of your Japanese winner, uh, Takuma Matsuyama, Billy Van Erde and Haruki Noguchi, which one of them, or could it even be Daniel Sharrell, the Malaysian, taking uh, the championship victory on home soil next time around. Let's get a look at the highlights, Fran. So it should be quite an action reel here to check out. So from here, you can see Hendriansa on the far left of the screen there. Jump start for him. Let's not forget, he was drama as well. And then Sender another... sent it into orbit near enough. Absolutely. And Hendriansa obviously still in that fight here. And then this huge crash we had, unfortunately. Like I said, a couple of these guys taken to the medical center. And uh, we'll have to get updates on them as soon as we can. But uh, Van Erde there in the lead. And then Hendriansa chasing him down until, unfortunately, the ride through notification did see that and then subsequently a black flag for the Indonesian. Uh, Hendry Ansu ran out of luck unfortunately at that point he was still fighting in the lead in this leading group until he was black flagged and he unfortunately felt he had a, uh, a technical problem he will be getting a, uh, a message about that there was Daniel Sharrell crashing out of the race unfortunately and possibly out of the championship fight though not mathematically this was the, the run down towards sort of the final closing stages Billy Van Erde versus Haruki uh, Noguchi yeah, it's all getting pretty tight then in this fight of four for the podium places. And Noguchi looked like he was going to absolutely push for the win. But in the end, it just wasn't quite enough. But he was in control here and uh, even out of that final corner. But just for the line, Matsuyama had timed it to perfection. And he'd already tried it, as he did yesterday, absolutely nailing the final sector especially. Looking really solid was the Japanese rider. But uh, yeah, Noguchi was able to get him back. Van Erda again trying to make that move around the outside, but not quite able to break late enough. And here you see great awareness from the Australian to be really conscious of where his competitors are around him and uh, no big pile up at that point. Exactly, this was the final sector though. Billy Van Erde moves up the inside of Harama and uh, then it was, uh, or it was even Harama going up the inside of him, but Billy Van Erde managed to get him at the line, as did Matsuyama. Well, that was it of all the action here in Mitegi. Join us next time in Malaysia to decide the championship.